this video covers activity 5 of the Martley Pool College paper for unit 2 and this is the structure evaluation. You've got 20 minutes for this and I think providing you practice before the exam you should complete this quite quickly and within the 20 minutes. What you need to do is evaluate your database structure and validation. You should consider how well your database structure has minimised data duplication? How well your database structure meets these requirements? And then we've got a list of requirements. The first one is that players are assigned a position, for example, centre forward. The second one, players are assigned more than one position during their time at the club. The third one, players are assigned a mentor. They stay under the care of that mentor for the entire time at the club. And then finally, statistics are recorded about the player for each position they play in. For example, they're given a player rating. This rating must be at least one, no higher than five. One is the highest rating a player can achieve. There's no template for you to complete for Activity 5. You will need to create a Word document and key in your evaluation and then save that as a PDF, obviously using the file name given in the activity. So that's activity5 underscore registration number underscore surname underscore first letter of first name. It's a good idea to break this evaluation up into two main parts. So the first part I'll deal with is the structure minimises jet duplication. And I've just done a little image here just to sort of clarify thoughts uh, and structure your answer. It's a lot easier to break things down into smaller parts and trying to deal with the thing as a whole. So let's have a look at this structure minimises data duplication. There's three main parts to this, I feel. Part one, what's data duplication? And give an example from your database. What's the purpose of normalisation? normalization and relational databases and then finally what have you ended up with following normalizing the sample data so you need to name the entities the primary and foreign keys and the relationships that you've got and you should always use examples from the sample data to support your explanations and link it to your database structure so let's have a look at our sample paragraphs so the first one I'll cover in this, uh, what is data duplication? Give an example. Here we have a sample paragraph. Data duplication occurs in a database where data is stored a number of times in one table. An example of this will be if the positions were stored in the player record. For each position, the player details will be duplicated, i.e. player surname, date of birth. The issue with data duplication is that it increases data storage and it's difficult to keep the data error free. For example, if a player surname needed to be changed, that would have to be changed in all the records for that player, not just in one place. The next paragraph I've written covers what's the purpose of normalisation and relational databases. Here we have a sample paragraph. The purpose of normalisation is to organise the data and minimise data duplication. Each attribute is stored only once, except for foreign keys. These are copies of primary keys and are used to create relationships between tables. Relational databases and normalisation eliminates data duplication and ensures data is error-free and storage is used efficiently. And then my final paragraph of this part is I'm going to write about what I've ended up with following normalisation or normalising sample data. I'm going to name the entities, the primary keys, the foreign keys and the relationships. So here's a sample paragraph. I've normalised sample data and identified four entities, player, mentor, player position and position. Each entity has a primary key, for example, player has player ID as the primary key. On the many side of a one-to-many relationships, there is a foreign key that is used to link two tables together. For example, in player, there is a foreign key, mentor ID. The second part of the evaluation covers how the structure meets the requirements. And I've split this up into four bits. 
are players that are assigned a position, e.g. centre forward, players are assigned a mentor whilst at the club, players are assigned more than one position and statistics recorded for players' positions. Again, only write about what's being asked in the activity. Use examples from the sample data to support your explanations and do link to your database structure and validation use. So let's have a look at the first one. I'm going to cover this one about mentor because that's where I left off with my previous paragraph was talking about this mentor. Here's a sample paragraph. Mentor of ID is the primary key for mentor. There's a one-to-many relationship between mentor and player. A mentor mentors many players, but a player can only have one mentor. A combo box based on mentor is provided in player, so the user can select the mentor for a player. The user cannot key in a mentor that does not exist in the table mentor, therefore enforcing referential integrity. If a player had more than one mentor, then this will be a many-to-many -many relationship and will require a joining table to be implemented in Access. The next part I'll write a paragraph for is players are assigned a position, e.g. centre forward. Players are assigned a position, e.g. centre forward. There's a many-to-many -many relationship between player and position. A player can hold many positions and a position can be held by many players. This cannot be implemented in Microsoft Access. I created a joining table player position between player and position. This created two one-to-many relationships to replace the many-to-many -many relationship. The primary key for this joining table is made up of the primary keys from the two original entities, i.e. player and sorry, player ID and position ID. Together, they are a primary key, but separately, they are also foreign keys. The next part I'll cover is the statistics are recorded for players' positions. So statistics are recorded about the player for each position they play in, e.g. player rating. All the statistics are therefore stored in the joining table player position as the player statistics are dependent on both the player primary key and the position primary key. The final part of the evaluation just covers this thing about the player rating. The player rating must be at least one and no higher than five. I validated the player rating using a validation rule. If the user enters a value below one or above five, an error message is displayed and the user has to enter a value between one and five. Just some final advice then to finish off this evaluation. Make sure that you do cover minimising data duplication and also you're not regurgitating all that you know about normalisation without it relating to the solution. And you need to cover both parts of this. So you're covering both the minimising data duplication and the structure meeting requirements. You're not giving a running commentary on what you've done to complete the activities in Part A. And you're not also going to talk about how well you were taught or how hard or easy you found the tasks or how well you performed. You're also not covering this evaluation from the point of view of the user. This is all about how well your database is structured to minimise duplication and how well your structure meets the listed requirements. As I said before, do practice this before the exam. You'll have a good idea of what you need to write about, what technical language you need to include uh, to get the highest possible marks that you can for this evaluation. In the next video, I'll look at part B. I'll do a quick introduction to the paper again, and then there'll be some videos following that covering the creation of the forms, the testing and the evaluation for part B. Thank you for watching this video.